how are sharks getting enough air to stay alive? I'm concerned about this. <laughs> now you're worried about all the sharks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode, we'll tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to lesson 74. We are still in our invisible things unit. Cheryl, is there something else that you can't see that you would like to know more about this week? Oh my gosh, Ryan, there's so many things I can't see and there's so many things I don't know about. So there's a lot of options for this unit, for sure. For, or for any Venn of our diagram units, really. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I would like to take it back to the original unseen thing, invisible thing in this podcast that's confused me. If we if we go okay. way back. Way back. How far back are we going? Early episode. We're going back to episode two. Episode we two. About dissolving. Mm, and at the end mm -hmm. of that unit and at the end of every unit since then, one of the things that's been hard for me are those little teeny tiny microscopic things. And so um Cells. I want to talk a little bit about water today because we we touch on water like mm. all the time because i mean there's a lot about science and water like we've talked about freezing we've talked about dissolving mm. we've talked about aquatic plants we've talked about dripping faucets like water comes up a lot it's kind of a big um, deal yeah and so water here's what i do know is that it's h2o right okay mm -hmm. yep. yeah yeah because I'm I'm now a student of science, and so I do know that water is H2O. So um, proud. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so it has oxygen in it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, I, um, I breathe oxygen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why, Ryan, can I not breathe water? Because you will drown? Yes, but it has oxygen. <laughs> and okay. my little fishies can breathe it. I mean, I yeah. know they have gills that like does something magical that my mouth and my lungs don't do. But like, yeah, what is it about water that makes it that I can't breathe it? Okay. That's a that's a really good question. Let's move into the pre-assessment then. Okay. Let's just start with what things do you remember about a water molecule. And you already said a few things, but let's just make sure we got them all together. Okay. Well, it looks like a little Mickey Mouse popcorn kernel. Um, and so, oh, there it is. Yay. <laughs> this is my favorite, your favorite little is, yeah. thing. Oh my <laughs> gosh. People, you need to watch our YouTube because these little, well, actually they're not little molecules for a molecule that's massive. It um, is. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> molecule model. Yes. Um, they're just so adorable. <laughs> so that's, um, I, I, for, I forget every single time if the number comes before or after the element. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it comes mm -hmm. after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you just asked me what I know about it, right? Yep. So you know it has oh, two gosh. hydrogens and one oxygen. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I know that it likes to stay together with its okay. friends. I know that from our faucet episode. Oh, friends being other water molecules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like they do the cool thing on the penny because they like to stay together. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that if we drank just water it would kill us i remember that mm -hmm. like plain mm -hmm. pure water right um i know that it's neutral mm -hmm. um and i know that it bubbles when it boils because of little those are oxygen bubbles yeah that like 
we don't need to get into that. You could listen to episode two if you want to find out why. Um, nope, that's not episode two. That no, was that another episode. That was a different one. Yeah, Oh about my gosh, boiling. we talked about water so much. We have. Yeah. That one we is talk- lesson 12. Okay. Uh, why does boiling water bubble? Yeah. And yeah. so that's like where, that's from the oxygen in the water. So I know that about it. Um, and I know that it can support plant life, like aquatic plants take stuff from the water to be able to live and everything. Those are some things that I know about water. Okay. What do you know about us and breathing? Um, it's pretty crucial. I know that. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I know that like the air we breathe is not a hundred percent oxygen. It's not even 50% oxygen, right? It's like what, like 20 or 30 or some number like that. It's, um, and that I think our, I, I don't know this. I think our lungs then like transport the oxygen to other places like i think our blood needs it and lots of other things in us need it but it goes through and out of our mouths well it doesn't go out of it because we convert it to carbon dioxide or something like that so okay um I could say other very obvious things about us breathing, but that's about what I know about us breathing. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's see if we can connect the two pieces there. You know that we breathe oxygen. You know that water has oxygen in it. You know that we use our lungs and our mouths. If there's oxygen in water, why can't we just inhale the water and be able to breathe it. Why do you think? I mean, the only reason I can think of is because we don't have gills, but I don't even know what gills do. Or like, could we get like a straw that's like a gill and then just like stick that in the water and then like, and then we can breathe because we have like a special gill straw. Like gillyweed? <laughs> like gillyweed. Yeah. No, gillyweed, it transformed his body. Um, That's true. It gave him yeah. gills. That's I true. I just want a yeah. gilly straw. Um, okay. Like, is it is that the only reason? Like, if we had gill, probably. So yeah. you're saying, so are you thinking it's like a filter of some kind? If you could filter the water through whatever this straw thing is, that would allow whatever comes out the other side to be something that we can breathe? Is that what you're Okay, see, now I want to say no, because when we've talked about chemistry Mm -hmm. in different ways, I think what I remember is like, like a gill isn't actually like breaking apart the molecule. Okay. Like they're not, because then where would the hydrogen go? You know what I mean? Like it, Okay. they're not like peeling apart the oxygen from the hydrogen and then okay. breathing in the oxygen. Oh, that's right. There, the water's like, air's like dissolved in water. Is a gill like a filter then? Like it's getting like those tiny pieces of air that are like amongst the water. How are they amongst the water though? Because water's How are, how are liquid, what amongst the water? Like little air, airs, air bubbles. Little like airs. <laughs> Okay, Why little don't they airs. Just, How like... are little airs in the water? <laughs> I think you get what I'm saying. I'm not saying it well at all, though. But, like, I don't know. Why are they in the water at all? But then is a gill, like, a filter that just can get out those tiny little air bubbles or air molecules that are dissolved in water? Is it dissolved in water? Um, and that's And we just, like, our mouths are too big. So we would okay. be able to get those like individual little pieces of air out of the water. Is that is that what it looks like when you're trying yes, to get like little pieces? Yes, like if my mouth was really small, then I could like, but then I would die because I wouldn't be able to breathe in enough of it. I still need a gill filter. I think it's a filter of some sort. Okay. So you think there's a size issue? Yeah. 
But then how are they getting enough? How are they getting enough air? <laughs> well, and like a whale does not have gills. They have to come up for air. So that's different. Right. But like a big fish, like sharks. Like how mm. are sharks getting enough air to stay alive? <laughs> I'm concerned about this. <laughs> now you're worried about all the sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I think I think we could keep going for a really long time on this, but I think we've yeah. got enough information to be able to move into a lesson to start breaking some of this down and putting some of the pieces back together again. Amazing. <laughs> In order to get at an answer, I'm going to start with a similar place to where we started with your pre-assessment of just talking about water, how does it work, and how does it relate to oxygen? Like you said... Water is H2O, and I'll just show you again because you love the little model there. I know, they're so right? funny. <laughs> yeah. Now, in this model, based on what you said with H2O, the white represents what? Hydrogen. Yep, which means the reddish-orange represents? Oxygen. Oxygen. So there's two little white ones and one of the kind of orangish-red one for oxygen. Okay? You got okay. that? Okay, yep. So based on that, what is this a model of? Oh, what is that? What are the like? Well, what do you see? Clampy start with what teeth. You see. So, okay. But besides that, what do you see first? <laughs> okay. I see two oxygen molecules. Oh, two oxygen atoms. Oh. This is one molecule. Okay. Each of the little round things, including with water, each of the little ones is an atom. Oh, one hydrogen great. atom, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. And so this is... O2. Yeah, O2. Two oxygen atoms. And the two little teeth, as you call them, they're little yeah. black things. These are a limitation of the model. This is how to keep oh, the two oxygen atoms okay. connected to each other. There isn't actually something like that. I know. I was like, I've itself. never seen something like that nope. before. Okay. It's it's just a, the way that we get them to stick together. And there's okay. all models have strengths and weaknesses. And that's one of the weaknesses <laughs> of this model. It doesn't really show that in the way that they actually stick together. But okay. it works. This is O2. This is oxygen gas. When we say we breathe oxygen, this is what we are breathing. Mm, okay. We are not breathing H2O. We are not taking the oxygen from the water molecule. And you sort of kind of got there partway through where you yeah. realize that, oh, we're not actually breaking apart the water molecule because then yeah. we'd have hydrogen left over. Yeah. So you're, you were correct. We're not breaking apart the molecule because then we would. We just have hydrogen gas, which is also flammable, and that would cause all sorts of problems. So we're not doing that, and fish aren't doing that either. Anything that's breathing, okay. you know, breathing underwater isn't doing that. The water yeah. is staying water. Instead, oxygen, O2, and this is where it gets confusing. So the oxygen molecule is dissolved in water, in between the water molecules. That's so and weird. I, it is weird. I have a, I've got, I found a picture online that I'm going to show you to try and help this make at least a little bit more visual sense. Okay. Ooh, wow. I, have, yeah. I want a wallpaper that looks like that. That's really pretty. It does look kind of cool. Do you want to describe a little bit of what you're seeing? Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of H's and a lot of O's in little circles. Mm -hmm. And then I'm seeing lines between a lot of these circles. And some are solid lines and some are dotted lines and some yeah. have two lines in between them. So I'm thinking that the O and the O with the two lines mm -hmm. between them would be our little oxygen friends. Yep. And that matches what this model is with the two mm -hmm. little black things or like those two little lines. It means... And you don't need to know what this means, but it, it's that they are – it's double bonded. So there are two bonds or two connections between the two oxygen atoms. Okay. So it's like the other ones are holding hands and then the oxygen ones are holding both hands. Yeah. 
Exactly. Great. Yeah. And then we have little H's and we'll have like an H and then on another side an H and then they both have a line to the O. But then I'm also mm -hmm. seeing little dotted lines. Yeah. And you don't need to worry about the dotted lines a ton. We've actually okay. mentioned this before when we talked about why a faucet is dripping. Yeah. And we talked about the water sticking to itself. This yeah. is that example. It's called a hydrogen bond. It's not quite the same as – think of it like – I'm trying to use the analogy you had. So instead of like holding hands tightly, it's holding hands loosely. I guess like when you're standing around, you have to hold the hand of a stranger. And so you're like technically holding their hand, but you're like not really <laughs> holding their hand. Like that's what we're talking about here. It just made me think of youth group games where uh -huh. like amoeba or things like that. And you had to hold yeah. hands with people and you're like, Ooh. yeah, and it's awkward. <laughs> so it's, it's where one side of one of the water molecules is very loosely attracted to the side of different side of the other one and that's why water tends to stick to itself um but we can talk more about that at another time if you want more details but that's what those dotted lines are but you okay. see how those when you have the oxygens that are double bonded the o2 they're not actually connected to any of the other parts do you see that yeah but they're they still match the pattern yeah, I think, well, they sort of match the pattern. They don't match it in the same way. They're like parallel with some of the lines. They're parallel yeah. with lines. They are. Is that to be I, I pretty? I, that might be to be pretty, yeah. Okay. I don't know that that's necessarily representative. There are some things because the auction, yeah, there's some other things that could be going on too, but it's probably mostly to make it look nice. Okay. But that's what it means to have oxygen dissolved in water. There are oxygen molecules, O2, that are separate from the H2O, but they're mixed in between each other. Just because? This is like a normal thing. This happens. This is like how this water is. It's a very is. normal thing. This is how water is, but it's also how air is, except Instead of it being oxygen, oh, I wasn't prepared for this. Quickly, quickly, I have to make a new Get model. Quick, set. quick. Come on, Where let's see all those this model one? options. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Give me Air a sec. Air has carbon dioxide and nitrogen and um, other air ingredients as well. Can I make this work? Come on. And... Maybe the name of something I don't know. And clouds no, are in air them. as well. This is nitrogen. This is a color you haven't seen yet. What color is it? <gasps> a really pretty blue. And is that a triple bond? Is that on purpose? It, yes. Good observation. It is. It's on purpose. It, there are three of them. So this is N2, which is very similar to O2, but it needs a triple bond because nitrogen works different than oxygen does. We can talk about what those bonds are and things on another lesson if you're curious. You could write that down. But nitrogen makes up almost 80% of the atmosphere, of the mm. air that you breathing you breathe in right now. Almost all of it is actually this N2, nitrogen gas. Mm. And so oxygen... O2 makes up about 20%. You said between 20 and 30. It's right around 20%. So you okay. had a good gauge there. It's mixed in with the nitrogen in the same concept sort of way that it's mixed in with water. They're just different molecules that it's mixed around. That's so interesting. Does it vary for water? Like... Yes, like a and lake that, or a river or the ocean yes. or yes, uh, it does. higher to the surface or mm -hmm. lower down. It does. And actually it varies in the air as well, in the atmosphere. The higher oh, you yeah. go, the less yeah, concentrated yeah. the oxygen is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's why it's, if you're, you know, up at a high elevation and you try to hike somewhere, you're winded a lot faster because you yeah. aren't able to take in as much oxygen. And yes, the same thing happens in the water as well. There's other things. There's pressure, there's temperature, there's also salinity. The amount of salt that's dissolved mm -hmm. in the water affects how much O2, how much oxygen can be dissolved in the water. So there's a lot of different things. And overall, there is a lot less oxygen, O2, that can be dissolved in water 
than can be dissolved in air. And this gets sort of at your second sort of part of this, which is how can, how do gills work? Why can you yeah. breathe water with gills, but not with lungs? And technically you can make the argument that lungs can quote unquote breathe and they would be able to absorb some oxygen, just not enough. Mm. We are, and our lungs are adapted for pulling oxygen out of the atmosphere where one, its concentration is a lot higher to give you some some numbers, um, what, a common way of measuring the amount of something, especially in like a gas or a liquid, is a unit called parts per million. Have you heard of this before? Yes. Yeah, I have. Do you know what it is? I mean, isn't it just a fraction? Basically, so yes. A being at the bottom, but it's kind yep. of like a standard amount to be able to yeah. like – compare things without doing fraction math? Yes, basically. <laughs> For every million molecules, how many of them are the substance you're talking about? So for okay. example, in the atmosphere, for every million molecules, about 210,000 of them are oxygen. Okay. So we would say 210,000 parts per million. Okay. Does that make sense? Or around 20%. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can yeah. do it that way too. Okay, cool. but yeah. but here's here's where it gets here's where it gets a lot harder, right? So okay. in in water, to keep the units the same, in yeah. water, there are about 4 to 8 parts per million. Not 4 to 8,000, 4 to 8 parts per million. How are any oxygen. fish alive? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So it's a huge problem. There's several pieces that contribute to why fish and other things can live underwater. One is the structure of their gills. The gills have really, really big, broad, a lot of surface area. They're often, um, I'm making wavy motions, like convoluted <laughs> where, where they have, they, they kind of, um, bend back and forth yeah, yeah, yeah. fold mm -hmm. so that you've got lots and lots of area that can interact with water so that's part of it okay so they have much much more absorbing surface relative to the to what they need than we do in our in lungs because lungs don't have to also fish are cold-blooded and their metabolisms are a lot slower than warm-blooded organisms like us so they actually need less energy overall and therefore also need less oxygen overall oh so yes there are some large organisms you mentioned sharks and sharks do yes. have gills right and so but they are they're not warm-blooded they're cold-blooded so they don't mm. have to regulate their body temperature at the same way they're they function at the the temperature of the ocean water more or less, because I mean, it can fluctuate somewhat, but right. So like they don't have to do all of those. Uh, they, they don't have to do all of the same things that we as warm blooded organisms do. So that's part of it. But when you realize the largest organisms that live in the water, you've already mentioned. Whales. Whales and they're mammals like us. Yeah. And they don't yeah. have gills. Yeah. They still breathe oxygen because they need they, it. They need to, and they have lungs. Yeah. So they can get a lot more of that oxygen from the air, and yet they also live in the water. Hmm. But that's why they haven't, like, evolved to needing gills or because, like... Well, it's more complicated because, remember, evolution doesn't work by, I need this thing, therefore I'm going to evolve oh, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right? Yeah. It's not an intentional yeah. thing. Um, yeah. But... Yes, that's a contributing factor as well. It's more efficient for them because of their body plans and things like that. Okay, so, so I have a question then. Yes. If my little gilly straw existed. Yes. Like, let's say that was a thing. Yep. Then it would have to be massive in order for me to get enough oxygen. Uh, it would have to be, like, bigger than my body. I mean, it would just have to be huge Yep. to be able to have enough surface area 
to get the oxygen yes. for me to even take one breath. Yes. And the reality is gills aren't really filters, just like lungs aren't really filters. Mm, okay. And I know why you're thinking it that way, but actually what happens, and again, if you want to know more about how respiration works, that can be another lesson at some point in the future. But basically, whatever the substance is that has the oxygen, the O2 dissolved in it, goes right up next to the blood source because the blood supply. And you said, well, maybe blood needs oxygen. The blood actually doesn't need oxygen so much as the blood is what carries oxygen. Mm, okay. It's yeah, the yeah. highway. It, the blood cells pick up the oxygen and carry it to all the other cells that do need the oxygen. But they have very, very, very thin, like one cell thick walls so that the oxygen can just flow through little holes, basically pores, to be able to get from the water or the air into the blood. Interesting. And but then, then the other things like nitrogen can't flow through? It's so it's not that nitrogen can't flow through. It's the process is more complicated. So okay. we'd have to talk more about that at a at a different time if you wanted to. It it but, doesn't um, flow through. Not really, not effectively. It doesn't. Okay. Like I'm not saying none of it ever does, but no, not effectively. Not in the same way that oxygen does. Okay, so if somebody breathes in a uh, toxic gas that kills them, okay, is the reason that it kills them because then that's what enters their bloodstream? Depends on the gas. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes that whatever that toxic gas enters the bloodstream. More often, it's because it takes the place of the oxygen and prevent and basically you suffocate. It prevents oh. you from being able to absorb the oxygen. Okay. So if you inhale whatever this other thing is instead, that's why um, like if you think of like carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide yeah. poisoning yeah. where a house a home can like fill with that it that actually is replacing the oxygen so it's not toxic in that like carbon dioxide is killing you in the same sense although carbon dioxide can do some of those things it's more that it means that now it's blocking the oxygen from getting there. It's decreasing the concentration of oxygen in the air around you. So you don't actually get to absorb enough oxygen for your brain usually, and then for your heart and some other, you know, vital organs and things like that. So, um, but there can be some that yes, also some, some things that you can inhale can also then get into your body and do damage that way. Some of them like chlorine gas, for example, will actually at a at an atomic level, at a at a molecular level, start tearing apart your lungs. And if they're oh. torn apart, now they don't work very well anymore. Yeah. You tear it apart, it doesn't tend to work very well. Interesting. But what you were saying about like carbon monoxide sounds a lot like why we can't breathe water then. Yes, it is. It is very similar. Yeah, good connection. Look at you. Look at that. See my random question? I actually like tied it all together. So. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> now, Cheryl, it's your favorite part of the lesson, the quiz. Swim away, swim away. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. First question. What form is the oxygen we breathe and also fish? By form, do you mean O2? I do. Okay. O2. Yes, that's the form it's in. O2. Very good. How are gills adapted to the small amount of O2 in the water? Well, fish are little wimps who don't need a lot. Or maybe they're more hardcore than us and they don't need a lot to survive. I'm not sure which it is. Um, they have a lower metabolism. They're cold-blooded. So first of all, they don't even need the amount of oxygen that we do. Mm -hmm. Um but then their little gills, all the surface area on it um, is able to soak up, soak up something sure. like that. The oxygen that it needs. I don't think soak up is a very scientific term, but um, eh. 
Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> it's able Great. to use the oxygen from there the water. From Absorb the water. is probably the there, more That's the term. word I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gills and lungs work in very similar ways. Why can't we breathe water? Um, because there's not nearly enough oxygen in the water mm. for us to breathe it. So even if our lungs could handle, well, yeah, because if there was an appropriate amount, yeah, even if like, okay, I'm trying to think of like, what if all of the nitrogen in the air was water? Like, could okay. we then breathe it? But I think still our lungs would have a really hard time with that much water in them. Mm-hmm. But we can breathe like humid air. So we are breathing air that has some water in it. We just need a lot mm -hmm. more oxygen and a lot less water or a lot yeah. more gas that we're breathing in and a lot less water Yeah. in order to not drown. Which I'm a fan of not drowning. Yeah. I mean, that's good. Yeah. All right. I've got two more questions. Technically, they weren't part of the lesson. Um, that's called cheating. No. It's it's called trick question. Oh, <laughs> Not hate, the same. I hate trick question. <laughs> They're Those technically things that you have learned in the past. Oh no. Okay. And you actually referenced them earlier. Oh. But I didn't get mm, to them in the lesson. So this is like more of like a unit quiz uh -huh. or like an end of year quiz like even. A, like beyond. a final. Yeah, this is like a final. Yeah, it's this like is a final. My oxygen final or my water there you go. final. But the first one's true or false. Oh, I hate true or false. <laughs> yeah, especially because I'm going to make you explain why. Ugh. So true or false? Fish breathe air dissolved in water. Gosh, that is tricky. That's very <laughs> tricky. Because in Finding Nemo, it looks like they're breathing. <laughs> Don't get stuck on the word breathe. Okay. Well, because, okay, so I, re I was going to say false because, because I don't know if gills count as breathing. They do. They do? Mm hmm Okay, then can I hear the statement again, please? Yes, you can. Fish breathe dissolved air in water, or air dissolved in water, if that's easier. True. False. Why is it It's false? not air, it's Oxygen. Oh, and oh, that is an important I distinction. Getting, I was thinking about the word "breathe" and not the word "air." Well, after okay. I just told you not to think I about know, the word "breathe," I know, I know, it still was like a whole thing. Okay, so this feels the same as when we talked about boiling water bubble, and which you, is we were called the next those question. bubbles air, and then it was like, well, if air is considered to be the oxygen, then it's air. But I feel like in that unit or in that lesson, I feel like you called it air. So now uh, you called you it didn't. air. I did I not call that air. air. Okay, you well, called it air. One of us called it air, and so now uh -huh. like it's an established thing on this book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move into question five then. Okay, what are bubbles in boiling water made of? Oxygen. No, water. Oh, because the hydrogen is still there. It's yeah. Just the gas. Yeah. It would have to be Water like gas. dissolved. It would have to be dissolved O2. Yeah. These but that's feel a so whole tricky, different thing. Even though it's a very important distinction, both of them, yeah. but it feels very yep. sneaky. I, I told you they were trick questions. I owned up to it. Okay. That's, and I still got fooled after <laughs> <laughs> Yep, but I, that is why I brought them up is because we have talked about those things before and it's not just you. That is a really common way that people talk about things. If it's a gas, we just call it air. And under a lot of circumstances, that's fine. It gets us close enough. But when we're talking about something like breathe, we don't just breathe air. I mean, yes, we do breathe the air, but it's the oxygen that matters in that air that we're mm -hmm. breathing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and that same idea where you said that like the water isn't getting broken down, right, into just oxygen and hydrogen. Well, the same thing's true when water is boiling. It's still water. It's just changing from a liquid to a gas phase. And when it's in a gas phase, 
that's the bubble. So there you go. Look at that. Tying it that all around. That makes sense. So if air was made up of water in gas form. Like all of it, 100%. We wouldn't be able to breathe it. Nope. We would not. So be no if I lived breathable in oxygen, a little no bubble, O2. if I was inside of a little bubble in boiling water, well, there'd be a lot of problems. The heat would yeah. also be a problem. And like how did boiling. I get to be that size? But <laughs> I wouldn't be able to breathe it. No, you would That's not. So interesting. Because it's, because it's not air. And again, think back to what with you were questioned before what we were thinking about, yeah. like if you yeah. have carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, some sort of gas that fills the room, you can argue it's still air, but it's not mm -hmm. made of the same stuff. It's not the same mm -hmm. molecules. And so some air is breathable and some air isn't. If yeah. it was pure nitrogen, we would die. And nitrogen is not toxic. Mm-hmm. Because again, it makes up almost 80% of our atmosphere. Most of what we breathe in and out is nitrogen. So it's, it doesn't hurt us, but if it was all nitrogen, we wouldn't be, there would be no oxygen. We couldn't survive. We wouldn't be able to live. That's so cool. That's really interesting. It, except <laughs> for the, you know, we wouldn't be able to live part. That's I cool. know, but a lot but. of the more fun <laughs> questions are about ways of things that would kill us. So I'm good with it. So <laughs> That's true. I would agree with that. I think some of the most fun things that I teach at all is what would happen if you were to fall into a black hole and how it would kill you. So I agree. <laughs> that sounds so fun. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do a lesson on black holes at some point. All right. That's all the time we have for our lesson today. Why don't you pack up your stuff and get ready for my closing remarks? You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Slept Through Science or on Twitter at Slept Science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at I Slept Through Science at gmail.com or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah! The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.